So a tent, it's your home away from home, and it's obviously a very important part to the bike packing puzzle. You need to consider a bunch of things like packability, durability, how good it can withstand the elements, all while being a comfortable place to be in for a long period of time, right? So I actually found that the Nimbus UL or Ultralight One was a good balance of all of those things. And in this video, I'm gonna share my experience on the lightest mountain hardware tent. Let's do it. So before we get into it, I just wanna mention that this video is supported in part by Terravel tires. The Sparwood is Terravel's mixed terrain tire made for comfort and performance when covering long miles on pavement, gravel, and forest roads with a dash of single track. The tubeless ready Sparwood comes in a few different size and variations. My favorite being the 29 by 2.2 durable casing version. So to learn a little bit more about the Sparwood, hit this link right here, or you can also find a link in the description below. All right, so what we have right here is the three season front entry Nimbus, which comes in at a weight of two pounds or 933 grams. This includes stuff sack, poles, stakes, guy lines, tent body, and the fly. And it's all kind of a little bit dirty, caked with sand and whatnot. So keep that in mind. So it's not necessarily the lightest tent out there, but it definitely holds its own in a category of these semi freestanding tents. So while the tent is 100% nylon, it does come in a few different variations. For starters, the tent floor, which also kind of comes up on the side a few inches, is made from a more durable 30D ripstop nylon. The white body right here in the front of the tent is made out of a 15D ripstop sill nylon. And the mesh is also a 15D mesh nylon. The fly of the tent is made of a 20D sill nylon and also comes in a dual zipper door, front door design just to match the tent body. Generally speaking here, Mountain Hardware did a pretty good job of maximizing their strength and durability where they needed it and then kind of reducing it and making it a little bit lighter where they didn't. And this is a pretty common method in tent making, especially with these nylon tents. So the tent has a footprint of 86 inches or 218 centimeters in the length with a 38 inch or 96.5 centimeter up front and 28 inches or 71 centimeters at the foot of the tent. The tent fly adds an additional small vestibule space with 28 inches or 71 additional centimeters from the tent body and this space basically tapers back to the corner or the head of the uh, the tent so I'm five foot nine and a half inches or 177 centimeters and I had plenty of extra room at both the foot and head of the tent especially when I was laying down the tent also has a height of 38 inches or 96.5 centimeters from the ground to the highest point of the tent and while I never really noticed I guess hitting my head on the tent. If I was, say, to lean forward or side to side, it definitely would. So um, that's something to keep in mind, especially if you are a little bit of a taller human being. Also kind of strange, uh, just looking at this tent, it, you might mistake it for a different tent with the Big Agnes Fly Creek. They look very, very similar. Um, and actually the dimensions are very similar as well. The only real big difference in the dimensions is the Fly Creek has an additional two inches of head space. All right, so the tent is designed around a three-point wishbone frame made from pre-bent DAC or DAC featherweight NFL poles, which come in at a weight of 215 grams and a length of 38 centimeters. So the pole also comes with a pole splint in the event that a pole cracks or breaks, which is nice. The tent also comes with eight seven gram stakes that uh, proved to be extremely durable after a number of uh, rock strikes. I definitely really enjoyed these stakes over um, some other competitors' stakes out there. You can also get an additional 40D nylon ground cloth, but I decided against that as this tent can't actually be used with a fly and a ground cloth as that fast fly setup. Plus ground cloths, they're really extra money and extra weight. And yeah, if you wanna save some money, just literally buy a small piece of Tyvek or go down the street and ask a contractor because it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> All right, so the setup of the tent, it's pretty, pretty easy. Um, so you stake or tie down the four corners of the tent. And after that, you attach the poles to the body of the tent. The end of the tent poles fit nicely in three aluminum pole attachment points, two in the front and one in the rear. But when setting up, I definitely suggest starting with the front because you need to actually loop the two poles, the two front poles through uh, some webbing loops, which I found a bit 
odd and this is definitely likely the biggest design flaw in my eyes. So the rest of the tent attaches using G-hook canopy to pole attachment system which Mountain Hardware says actually helps reduce compressibility versus say using a tent with a larger clip system and that's found on definitely a lot of tents out there. So this is a pretty unique system and it worked really well. It was easy to place the loop and cord over or in the G-hook and easy to uninstall. It never actually unexpectedly uh, detached from the G-hook, the, the tent body. Definitely something a little bit different. So I definitely give props to Mountain Hardware on that. So while the tent does not need to be used with the fly, obviously, um, I use the fly almost all the time just because most of the time I was camping in cooler temperatures, typically down to around freezing. Uh, the fly conveniently attaches to the three aluminum pole attachment points and then the two tent stakes at the foot of the tent. The fly then tightens down with some adjustable cord at the three aluminum pole mounting points. The fly also comes with three more stake attachment points, two on the side and then one up front for the vestibule. Inside the side of the fly are small clips to attach to the body of the tent and this just basically stretches the tent body out a bit more. The tent fly also comes with velcro straps to attach to the tent poles. And while I use them, I'm not sure how useful they really are. And while there are no real good way to use the provided guidelines on the tent fly, I did find that the provided extra cord was useful in the event that I needed some extra length when I was, say, using rocks as tent anchors or tent stakes. So overall, the setup was really easy. And with the nylon fly, I did find that I had to um, actually readjust because it does stretch. So what I would do is set it up when I got to camp and then adjust a little bit more before I went to bed. So packing this thing down actually was really easy. It takes no time at all. And from time to time, I even use the provided stuff set uh, especially when using the tail fin aero pack. It just kind of helped keep the tent contained and compressed um, and it was only 15 additional grams. But when using a seat pack or a dry bag, I would just shove it in there, compress it down and leave the stuff sack at home. As for the poles, they aren't short like some companies adopting shorter bike packing specific poles, but I never really truly found that to be annoying. And actually I think the longer poles worked in my favor more as I typically pack them with the provided pole bag and strap them next to my dry bag on a rear rack. But I could see this being annoying of course, if you have um, say drop bars that are rather narrow, or if you want to throw the poles in a tight space inside your frame bag. And yes, you'd think maybe there'd be some dents or something um, after putting the poles right next to or on my rack, but there was none of that, no dents, um, just a few scratches and that's about it. The tent also comes with a small stake bag, which was nice to just keep the stakes and extra guy lines in order. So the Nimbus has two pockets inside um, the tent, a side pocket where I usually put stuff sacks for my tent, maybe sleeping pad and sleeping bag, and then a top pocket um, that's basically built into the mesh, and that's for smaller items, and sometimes I would actually put my headlamp up there. But generally, I found that I either stored um, all of my stuff kind of next to me in the tent or in the vest and then I used one of my dry bags with extra clothes as a pillow just right by the head of the tent. So the tent did a really great job of keeping bugs out and the mesh itself shows no real signs of wear and tear anywhere after taking a closer look, which is something I really appreciate and it speaks to the construction of the tent and the fact that there are minimal high stress areas on the tent. So one thing I really appreciate about the added nylon near the head of the tent is a bit of wind protection, but also protection from flying debris like sand. It does a decent job of reducing the sand entering the tent um, near the, at least the head of the tent, as opposed to say a tent that was fully mesh. But speaking of sand, this tent endured a lot of elements such as wind and rain. The tent survived gusty winds up to 30 plus miles an hour. However, with the three point pole frame, it certainly makes the foot of the tent, which is definitely a bit less stable, uh, move around a bit more. So I actually woke up on a recent trip in the middle of the night and it was super, super windy. And I actually got out of the tent to just make sure that my stakes were in place and everything was in order. And it was, and actually it was holding up really well. So this was a serious test of the Nimbus. Despite the side of the tent kind of acting as a sail with big gusts, it would kind of move that, that tent pole over. But when the gusts would stop, it would just 
go right back to normal. And after inspecting this tent, all of the reinforced seams and anchors are intact. However, the tent fly now has a hint of orange to it from the Moab sandstone pelting the side of the tent. It's pretty funny. All right, so as for rain, I actually hung out in the Nimbus for an evening all night and one morning uh, in consistent rain in Wisconsin. I even set up the tent in the rain. Um, so the base of the tent did a pretty good job of keeping moisture out. However, um, a sheet of Tyvek or that ground cloth, yeah, I know, could have been um, beneficial in that instance. All right, so one thing I definitely noticed was you can see the side of the fly. It kind of actually raises up a little bit higher. I would love to see maybe an extra foot in length as the current height just allows wind to kind of pick up moisture or unwanted sand and kind of deposit it into the mesh of the tent. That said, even when the fly was saturated with, the, with that rain, um, there was still enough gap between the mesh and the fly to prevent any water saturating into the mesh, which was nice. The tent's lightweight nylon does a really great job of drying out, especially in the desert west, where we are right now. And once the sun pops out, any bit of condensation um, is quickly gone. And the tent itself never really built up too much condensation in general, even on cold nights. But again, most of my time using this tent was in the Western United States where humid tends to be much lower. All right, so it's been a year now since I got this tent and I've been using it for a handful of trips over that time frame, And I found it to be a lightweight, packable, minimal frills tent that protects you from the elements. And yes, the fly has definitely seen some abuse, uh, but the body and overall functionality is definitely still there. The tent just became a reliable place to get some shut-eye, even when conditions were not so pleasant. The Nimbus one I think also comes in at a pretty decent price point for a tent of this nature, coming in at 400 USD. Just to put it into perspective, the Big Agnes Fly Creek comes in at 370 USD, and the Nemo Hornet Osmo Ultralight comes in at 400 USD. So the Nimbus also comes in a two-person version if you are looking for a little bit more space or if you have two people. So let me know what you think about the Nimbus UL1 in the comment section below. If you like what you saw in this video and you want to see a little bit more, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. Support from our members sustains this channel and everything we do here at bikepacking.com. The Collective has a lot of perks, including the twice annual Bikepacking Journal, monthly giveaways, and more. So to learn a little bit more, you can click on the card in the top right corner, or also find a link in the description below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, pedal further.